What's up, everybody? This is Lance with From Ashes New, and you're watching the Metal Teddy Bear Experience Podcast. The Metal Teddy Bear Experience has begun. And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. This is your host, Chris. We got Jesse, and we have a special guest today. We have Lance from Ashes to New. What's up, man? How you doing What's today? up? How are you guys doing? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> I'm just happy I don't have to shovel today because we've been getting... We're from yeah. Jersey, so we got 22 inches last week or a couple days ago, and we were supposed to get more snow today. And I was kind of dreading it because we got another five the other day, so I was like, please stop. Yeah, we both got that same big storm. I think I had to shovel what like a week and a half ago. It's pretty bad. Then I woke up today. There was there's another few inches today, but nothing like terrible. Oh, yeah, yeah, they said we we're gonna get it, but I mean maybe later on. Where, where are you calling in from right now? Ohio. Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah. you get the pain. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it's, it's terrible. You like I don't know. I feel like where we are in Jersey, we we get snow, but there's always like people like I follow that the bands that are maybe upstate New York or. Mm. They're in like Massachusetts, and we need to show like pictures of the car under freaking snow. Yeah, and it's like they, look what uh, I gotta do, and I'm like, oh, okay, I never had to do that. This is the first time I was like, oh crap, it's like, like I could get lost in here. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, it's been a while. Yeah, Danny, Danny lives up in Buffalo, the Rochester oh, area, God, so like wow. he has seen some things. <laughs> just lost. Yeah, we lost family members. They come back, but it's just when you know summer comes. Right. So it's like yeah, I was stuck in a house up there. I just I couldn't call. Right. <laughs> Either that, or you just want to be like all the all the old people that fly to Florida. Yeah, right. Winter. Retirement home, basically. <laughs> or New three. Jersey. That's, I was like, oh my god, is there a second Jersey or just second like New England area you could just fly to? Just just get away from it all. <laughs> I think it was pretty funny too when I just went outside. I didn't realize that like where my car was because the snow was so high and covered. I was like, "Where that? Where is actually the handle to the door? Like, which side am I on right now?" <laughs> it was that yeah. bad? That's why but, it's good to have a shitty car. You just start stabbing at it. Just where is it? You just start stabbing. It. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst if you got to park on the side of the street when the plows come through and just <laughs> add even more out. onto it. <laughs> Oh, uh, dude, I visited my friend that's in the city and he just had to shovel himself out. I was like, this is terrible. It's like, I thought your driveway getting covered in snow where it's like higher than you, but it's like, oh, no, the car where you got to be careful. I was like, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and he was lazy. So it did like three days after. So it was ice. It's like, this is great. He's just stabbing at it. I'm just like, build the muscles, right? <laughs> I guess, dude. I, I looked up a snowplow mid shovel. I was like, dude, can I make it to Lowe's in a catastrophe type snowstorm? <laughs> can I buy this? <laughs> Well, just uh, relating this back to music on the Metal Tabers podcast, not the weather forecast. But anyway, uh, you guys put out a brand new album from Ashes to New, Panic, uh, August 28th. Um, how excited were you for this? This is your third studio album. Uh, as for the music on the album, 100% pumped. I love it. As for the the rollout with no no touring and stuff, not not too excited to for me to release something so great and to just kind of sit at home, but... Yeah. Did you try different ways to like market it? Was it like, did you try to get creative with it? Um, there's only certain ways that labels will be able to do something. Like we did the best that we could. The team did the best that they could with all circumstances given. Like if we were to go back now, hopefully they would agree with us that maybe we should have just done singles, like kind of built it up over time. Like, um, uh, we say this all the time, like bring me to the horizon did that um, yeah. with theirs. Like they started out with, I think, it, I think Ludens was the first one that they put out and they just kept doing singles until they dropped the rest of the EP. But either way, I mean, we still waited long enough. We were kind of sitting on the record for a good eight months, maybe seven, eight months. So once this happened, we kind of sat for maybe one to two months saying, all right, I don't think touring is coming back guys. Let's, let's just go ahead and come up with a plan and put some music out for people, but they wanted to do the whole record. So we did the whole record and here we are, it at least puts us in a position that maybe we can start working on some new music, try to do another record, get that out by the end of the year. Could be hopeful for that. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah, Reality is falling apart. <laughs> yeah, usually when we yeah, ask, it's, 
members is like, hey, when you uh, when do you think you're going to go live? Like, do you know have any insider info of like playing shows? And most times the people on the show, just, they're like, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I mean, uh, you want to be hopeful, but you got to be realistic. Fall at the latest, but I have no hopes for this year, which yeah. is it's bullshit. But I have no hope. Like I, I, I retweeted uh, Seth Morrison from Skillet's tweet. He's just talking about, all right, you got 20,000 people at the Super Bowl. That's cool. <laughs> yep. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like, that, come that, on. That is a weird thing, too, when you think about that. Like, but also, yep. like, because there's like, there's been plenty of sporting events that have had a lot of people. I think there's been other, there's a few other things where it's just like a lot of people in, you know, indoors or close together. Then you got like outdoor, vet, uh, you got like restaurants making like indoor, outdoor places. Like in mm-hmm. New York City, it's cold. So they literally have just, bodegas like mini bodegas outside where it's closed off it's like all right you're separated from other people but you're basically inside like so it's kind of like it's tight but it's like i understand because people just don't know but it is those things where people like i don't know i feel like people think of music as secondary sometimes even though they enjoy it so much which is fair you know but it's like at the same time they're like wondering well why are bands going away it's like well you're not letting them make money (laughs) you know (laughs) right (laughs) understandably i'd be afraid if like shows start happening i'd be afraid to go since like covid's still like pretty strong going Mm -hmm. on but it's like you know, it's weird. It's a weird time. Obviously. Every time you turn on the news, too, there's like a new strain that's worse than before. Yeah. Like, oh, I thought it was getting better. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty terrible. But hey, but that's why it's kind of interesting. You guys started doing a lot of stuff on your YouTube, I noticed. Like, you guys like kind of posted like videos here and there. But then, like, when COVID kind of hit, I saw you guys posting pretty regularly where covers. I know yeah. you did a personal cover where it was a kind of all you, the Post Malone cover, and a few uh, anime covers. Yeah, it's just. I mean, we needed to utilize our YouTube, obviously. Yeah. But at the same time, like, we've never been that band that, like, wants to do covers. We were kind of forced into doing that because we we had an album coming out, but we still needed more material. So, like, all right, I guess we got to do some covers. So, kind of just went that route. I, I think we may have been part of the beginning wave of artists that started to do that. Luckily, that caught some attention because then – after a while, everyone's like, all right, no touring. Let's all do covers. Like it's just, yeah, it's yeah. just how it goes. There's no way around it, but luckily we were smart about it. Started off strong, kept doing that. And honestly, now I'm kind of sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> like I just, I just want to do new music. So that's, that's what we're focused on yeah. right now. Yeah. I feel like you personally, I know that you said the band, but you personally, like when you were, you, you kind of probably played covers when you first started playing, but you got out of that probably quickly. Cause you seem like a multi-instrumentalist. So you probably start mm-hmm. writing your own stuff. Mm-hmm. pretty soon after learning right mm-hmm. i'd assume yeah because i noticed that with the post loan i was like oh shit this guy just does everything i was like all right well that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah, the cover covers are cool it's just I, I would never be comfortable with having a career made from a cover i mean there are some yeah. bands that have those not talking shit they still make, <laughs> they still make great music yeah it's yeah. just it's just i want to be known for my own shit and only that but Whatever, which, whatever which happens, happens. Which is fair, though. <laughs> yeah. Which is understandable. It's like, as someone, I never really made my own music, but I, the few songs I made with friends were infinitely more fun to play than, so, hey, man, you want to cover mm-hmm. Killswitch Engage? Like, I love Killswitch, but like, it was so cool. Like, also, it's kind of weird how you just remember it. Yeah. Be like a couple years after that, it's like, oh, I just know it. Cool. All right. Rock. You also it. have like, a connection to it, too. I know, when, like, when I write riffs, like, you remember that the time and place you were when you wrote it and kind of like nostalgia in a way. I don't know how if do you ever feel like that when you're writing? Um, the, yeah, there are some we almost on this record purposely made some riffs to make other people feel that way. Honestly, like uh, take uh, I talk about all the time with "Death of Me." I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with that particular tune. That was crafted on purpose at all the people that are like, you guys sound like Lincoln Park, and also on the other hand, <laughs> please do songs that sound like Lincoln Park, like. So we, we were kind of like, all right, let's, let's just fucking let's feed into it. It's fine. Do you like um, not like being compared to them, or is it? I I don't care either way. Yeah, okay. it, it's 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 a great thing. Doesn't matter to me. Um, I, I guess I'm just used to it by now. But yeah. we went with that. We, we were like, all right, fuck it, let's make a riff that will make people think. This kind of takes me back to the days of listening to One Step Closer, and then also at the same time, put some Three Days Grace feel into the verse, put some old like Getting Away with Murder era Papa Roach into the chorus. Like we 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 purposely made that song as like a love letter to that time, you know, to make people, I don't know, feel a certain way. Like 
that was the prime time for rock music for me personally. That's why I loved it so much. Yeah. Yeah, which is fair. Also, like, it's just interesting because you kind of pointed out, like, probably the worst part of the internet. You literally, because you have so many people just coming at you at once, you literally will have people say the same thing to you in a negative and positive way. Yeah. I mean, like, like I said, we'll get that. We'll amazing. be like, <laughs> you, guys, you guys sound like Linkin Park. You guys need to sound like Linkin Park. Or <laughs> this sucks. You, you can never be like Linkin Park. It's yeah. whatever. And yeah, then the person literally crying emoji. I, I needed don't. another Lincoln Park. And so like, <laughs> how do you say that next to the guy saying like KYS? Why you guys sound like Lincoln Park? It's like this doesn't make sense. Or thrash bands. It's not fast enough, dude. This is fast. I love it. It's like, what? <laughs> you will never please everyone. Everyone on yeah, the yeah. internet's got something to say. Yeah, and I also take it from some of the your, your like the setups you had for your covers, and also it's kind of the Twitter. I'm assuming you handle a lot of that. We, or am I assuming wrong? Everything's even. Even? Uh, okay. Across the board. We all had to get in a little bit of knowledge on cameras and software and all that. Like, we're all pretty much 25% split on just about everything. Okay. It's like one of the hardest yeah. things, like, during this pandemic that you guys had to, like, overcome or just, like, learn. Of, like, I know a lot of people say, like, live streaming and syncing, like, everything together was really hard. Is there something that was, like, difficult for you guys? Uh, on not really anything special N nothing besides not being able to do our thing honestly like the the rest of the stuff kind of just comes to us it's just like i said before the fact that we have to do it so it's like <laughs> you don't want to do it we just want to be yeah. out there did you guys have like any extra tracks from panic that maybe like you guys released later on or something like that because some bands have like 30 tracks that they do and they cut it down to like 10 or 15 that happened to you um yeah we, we it's pretty safe to assume we'll have some B-sides or a deluxe coming out at some point. I don't know when, because I'm not in the know. I just kind of hang back and just wait for emails to come through. <laughs> I would expect maybe fall, late summer, some new tracks will probably come your way, I hope. Yeah, that'd be fair. Yeah, it's, it's interesting with that, because I was always wondering one of the hardest parts, because I know a lot of bands like started right like released like either released an album or started writing and finished an album during the pandemic and released it where do you think that will ever become a problem like let's say you do start working on another album and you release it sometime before this whenever if it's another year if it's you know however long it takes to write another album do you see like how the feeling is going to be playing shows again where you're going to have to decide between the two new albums because technically you never played panic live or you maybe played a single live before it was released right. but how do you think that's gonna do you do you foresee that being a problem or do you just like I, yeah i don't know I, I, you're right like all the hype will be on whatever the new thing is yeah but you want to play the old stuff that you never got to play so but just technically yeah. new it's like here's this right. new stuff that's yeah i don't know i yeah never really had to think about it but yeah um we'll we'll at least try to incorporate whatever like the more the, the i guess what it's called the upper yeah. songs on panic will probably be included because we like to keep our live show at least somewhat moving we don't like to slow it down too too much so like we we did play panic we played death of me and we played nothing live on the skillet tour so we'll probably still play those at the very least yeah i was wondering that because when like one thing i was thinking especially bands that may may not release another album they were only released one uh i wonder if like time's gonna freeze because people in their mind like to me so like you know I'm not doing anything like kind of life. Like I'm doing some stuff, but most, most life, especially media life, it's like kind of frozen where I haven't seen the bands that released the songs now. Right. Like, so technically to me, it's like, Oh, so would that just be a big album to me? I don't know. And I know bands already have problem. Like obviously you guys, this is your third album. If you came up with the fourth album, you already have problems probably picking songs. Right. Cause you have right. probably have a lot of songs you like personally. Hey, at this point, I feel like bands, any band, we could just play our whatever is off the first record and people will be happy when shows come back. But it doesn't yeah. matter what we play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> I mean, I know for me, like, as soon as the show gets announced and, like, you know, it's safe to go, I'm just, I think I'm going to go to all of them. Like, when I, like every band that's, I mean, I know, like, every band is going to be around, so it's hard to go to all your favorite band shows and stuff like that. Because we always talk about that, too. There's going to be tons of shows and ton of albums. Because like I know like bands like Gojira are still holding on to their record, because they they won't release until they have a tour out. There there are some bands like that that are fortunate enough, like a big enough name that they can kind of survive off of just waiting it out. I feel bad for a lot. Like I don't consider us a huge band. Like we're a grow, we are a growing band, but there are also bands in tiers 
below us that like i actually worry about like i do have a lot of friends in those bands i'm like man times are rough i don't know how you're going to save your money to be able to bounce back from this like it, it is a business and you're losing a lot of money like it, it worries me and i don't even know when touring comes back like how it's going to affect bands like even think about stuff like tour buses and stuff like do are certain companies going to go yeah. out of business is everyone going to go back to like having to play in or tour in a van i hope not like you just yeah. have no idea what to expect anymore well uh bjorn yeah. did an interview i forgot with who but i saw on metal injection bjorn from uh, soil work he mm -hmm. said that mid-sized bands are going to be hurt the worst because of um those bands usually don't have like a day job to go back to mm -hmm. so if this ever falls through or anything like you know decreases a little bit they're either gonna have to make a choice between going on with their band or actually finding a, a day job, nine to five job to like actually, you know, make money and you know provide for yep. their families. It's not a good time. <laughs> yeah. That's, it's unbelievable. And especially too, it's like, I would say it's like, I don't know. It's going to be weird. Yeah. If people like, cause also people just have like, it's weird to ask people for money too. Like I've been spending a lot of my money probably ignorantly, which is probably not a good thing. I think <laughs> everyone kind of has, we got nothing yeah. better to do. We need something yeah. that makes us happy. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But I want to for bands like, you know, I love, I want the bands to be around when I come, like when it's okay to go to shows again, I want to see all these, but I want, you know, I want to see you guys. I want to see everybody. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I don't want you people to go away, especially for that reason. I'd rather it be like, I don't feel it anymore. I don't want it to be, no, I love making music. But now I got to work at Kmart. So, yeah. So say, so good so luck like, finding the Kmart. <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, dude, like, you one have left. one Kmart left. <laughs> <laughs> you have it? No way. It was meant to be. Honestly, <laughs> and then also when shows come back, I might just go see like kids' town shows. I don't right now. It's like, dude, why are you at the high school? I was like, I just want to show. Like, just play. Are you playing Jimi Hendrix? That's cool. I guess I'll sit here. <laughs> I just need music again. Well, just but, uh, going back to the the albums, you, you guys released three albums now, like we said. Um, what was the biggest difference between like this album, just like writing wise, like, I know the whole pandemic and everything like that, but what'd you guys try to do differently? Um, the biggest difference probably between the future and this one is like getting, getting to know the other two guys since they were new at the time when we started the future, that's when we picked up Danny and Matt, like yeah. right as we were writing the record. So like these guys come in, we don't know them well enough yet. It's just like learning about each other and how we work what we like what we're trying to do so that was still kind of um, not experimental by any means but like figuring out the process there were still great songs on that record i don't hate it it's great it's fine but like we've all got it grown together and our tastes kind of honed in on what we like as a band um, we had a vision for this record so it was easier to write this record than the future i think like it was more natural more organic at least for us. I think that's the biggest difference was learning each other's strong points. Yeah, and that's that's pretty interesting you bring that up because I was wondering because you guys never replaced your bassist, right? It's you, you, you re-record bass and so does uh, the, sorry, I forgot his name, the rapper, the one that he does like a lot of stuff. The, yeah, the single, yeah. He does a lot of shit too. Like, you two do a lot of stuff in the band. So is it because of the two new members like you, you know, you replaced, is it you guys got such a good chemistry? Did you guys not want to like work on possibly inviting a fifth and you just- Oh, record, yeah, like, you already nailed it. Up? Yeah. You nailed it. Like, it. there's been too many members in the band. Like, at this point, like, why mess up a good thing by oh, yeah. potentially mess up? Would rather just keep it as is. No one really complains. There's always that one guy every like three shows. Where's your bass player, man? So, <laughs> we don't worry about that one guy. Whatever. Yeah. That one guy's okay. He's it's he's fine. just there. Yeah, because I'm a big fan of Periphery, and they did the same thing. They had a, mm -hmm. a bassist Nolly, and then he just he left to go become a full time producer. But mm -hmm. and they're like, why didn't you ever replace him? It's like, oh no, we have him. He's just over the tracks. <laughs> you know, right. he still helps us write occasionally. They record with him, mm -hmm. and I, I I got lessons from Matt Halpern, the drummer, and he said it's just too hard sometimes like they were fighting a lot then they finally got into a good place and then nolly left and they're like we're not going through that again <laughs> it's yeah. like we're good yeah, there's been there's been too much stress in the past with this band and i'm sure every other band in existence so i just i prefer to live my life as stress <laughs> well, so it was i think too with like a new member i know um i mean every band is different obviously but i i've i heard some bands are like well you're basically just gonna play what we give you and sometimes they hold that resentment. They're like, no, I want to contribute to the writing process. Like, no, you're the new guy. You're not writing. And then some bands are like, no, you're writing with us. Let's go. You're not like a session guy. It's like, it's always a different dynamic. Yeah. I mean, I, whatever they, you do you, but for us, like, 
Like we brought the other guys in because they got talent. We want to see it. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I do understand though. I get where they're coming from. If they have control issues, you know, they've been a successful band. They bring somebody else in. It's like, sit on the sidelines for a second. Just do your job. We'll see what happens. I get it. But damn, that makes people feel like shit. Like they don't, you're not going to want to stay in the band if you're like that. Yeah. Yeah, You're just like a higher gun at that point. Yeah. And you possibly feel like, like you said, with covers, you don't like playing covers. It's not your own stuff. Mm -hmm. It's probably what they feel like. Oh, this is great. I'm in a band, but basically just playing covers for money, which is cool. But some people (laughs) don't like that eventually. And it's a good thing that we do things this way because every, all four people in the band write and contribute to something different that you wouldn't even think that they do. Yeah. Like if you dissected panic, the comment, the, the lay person would think, uh, Matt wrote all the raps. Danny wrote all this lyrics to the core or whatever. You know what I mean? Like they just do to their part, but the riff was mostly Danny. The, the, like the song, the musical construction bed was mostly Danny. Like he had this jamming riff that kind of made your head bob. I'm like, all right, I like this riff, but I want to see it go in like a weird chromatic descending, like ugly grungy thing. So let's yeah. combine the two. That's why it sounds like it does, but it's mostly Danny's riff. Um, we wrote that song in a day. It was the last day in the studio. Um, so we all kind of like spread out. We're like, all right, I got this. So Matt did the first verse rap. I wrote the uh, second verse rap. Um, Matt and Danny went out to Chipotle and Panda Express and wrote the chorus. <laughs> Came back with that. I was working on the the breakdown with the producer while they were out writing the chorus. So it, it's just everything kind of, we do everything. I was going to yeah. ask too, like, how do you guys start a writing process? You know, everyone's different. It's like, all right, we're just going to, like, all you system down. They're, like, waiting for Darren to bring us the music, and then they all make their tweaks to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, as I say, we pretty much all just, like, on our own, come up with, like, our meat and potatoes for either a riff, a chorus, a blah, 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 whatever. As long as something is there, we'll bring a handful of those. We all meet up. We show each other stuff. We're like, this is good. This is good. Let's work on this all together. And then we kind of, the rest falls into place. But, yeah, we all kind of just come up with our own ideas and show each other. Is there anything ever there. like out of left field or something? You're like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that from you, Matt, or something like that. Um, not, not exactly. Um, if there's anything out of like left, left field, it typically comes from me, and that's not always a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's um, the strangest thing you did? Or left like, like, like take take the song "Nowhere to Run" off the future. Uh, that that was like my brainchild i wanted something kind of 80s sounding but it, the record the one on the record doesn't sound like i'll never be happy about this but the original version of that song is so incredible and you you guys will never hear it but like Maybe like a 15 anniversary edition of the album yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there was a team that went behind our back chopped it up and made it what it is and we're just like uh what is oh, this geez. nightmare so there's still some crazy shit that happens but at like we have an entire nowhere to run this like just super Phil Collins in the air tonight, eighties vibe that you would never get from listening to it today. But uh, I, I typically bring the weirdo stuff like that. There's something like <laughs> this doesn't fit us, but we'll try to make it fit somehow. Yeah. Which is what you need too sometimes. Cause like some people like, that's one critique that's always weird when people do like a really good thing. You know, let's say mm-hmm. you do like 15 years of your sound people are like, Oh, and you just do a little tweaks. Like, Oh, well, you know what you're going to get with them. It's like, well, yeah, you like them. Don't you? But it's always right. good to have that one track on the album. It's like, where the fuck did this come from? <laughs> like when Lamb of God had that orchestra, you're like, huh? And he yeah. just did like a soft spoken, like talkative poem. I was like, okay, I'm into this. Like, yeah. it's just like, you didn't see that coming. Sometimes it can be a little dangerous though. Like if, yeah, I think as long as you have the core sound on the record, you can experiment with one or two tracks. But if, if your whole sound is kind of up and changes, that's when you get into the dangerous waters. Yeah, there's been a few bands that got slapped directly in the face. Because, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would just say because I'm like, I'm pretty open. So I'm like, I like it. You know, I like the old stuff. I don't go right to Twitter. I'm like, what? <laughs> and just start typing. <laughs> just like, you know, where I saw people, I'm like, damn. And then there's other people like, you always, did you ever like try to make this band into something like, not like Math Corey, like Dillinger, but a band that could do whatever it wants? Or do you feel like you're kind of secure in the having that core, what you're good at. And then just adding little bits. Yeah. It's, it is proven time and time again that it's not a bad thing, but rock fans don't really like change. Yeah. It, it, it is what it is. And you know, we gotta be smart about it. You know, you liked us for a reason. We're not, we shouldn't abandon that. 
Yeah, it, I I have this one friend who gave that kind of example too, where he's like, you know, he's like, I like listening to In Flames for like their melodic death metal, and that's what I go to. If I want to listen to like what they're doing now, I listen to another band. And he was kind of mad that they changed their whole sound. He's like, he's like, I like In Flames for what they did. Why do they have to change that? You know? Yeah. And I was like, well, also to, not to interrupt, but it it's not always the artist's fault. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Sad. Gotcha. Yeah, that's true too. There's a there's a lot of deals going on, you know, in the in the back that you don't know about as like being fans <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, there's an entire corporation behind the backs of many artists who read things via Spotify numbers and like we need this and this and this and you're gonna do this. Analytics. Yeah. I mean, luckily, we have a good team. Like I said, there was a, a hiccup on nowhere to run, which I'm not happy about. And whatever if they see this and they hear it, whatever <laughs> you're gonna know i'm unhappy about it but things like that happen um you're constantly gaining um trust in your relationship with your business backers whether it's a label or whatnot sometimes you go through some shit and sometimes it gets better and better and better and that's why we i'm so happy with this record and what we came up with yeah i've heard that too many times with bands i like where it's a shame when it's a song you like too and they're like yeah we yeah. didn't want to make that i'm like oh that sucks like i really <laughs> like that song too i was like oh man it makes me sad that they're not happy with that because it's like or it is also awful where you're like that song is terrible like don't even mention it please <laughs> it wasn't our fault at all <laughs> yeah it happens well you guys are pretty good at like branding right now i see like like you have all your covers, your YouTube page, your Instagram. Like you guys have a lot of like stuff going on. Do you ever think about just branching off, doing your own thing, having your own like record label, something like that? Um, man, me personally, I bet Matt probably would. Like there was, we go through these phases, just like you know, teenagers going through their emo phase, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, like there was a time where me and Matt wanted to like form like a writing company start writing for other people i bet he probably wants to do a record label eventually when there's an extra capital investment to get into but for right now if we're going to be smart about it just keep doing what we're doing like you said our instagram like blew up since this pandemic yeah. we've almost doubled our numbers in less than a year You're like shit like that's crazy that i'm glad we all have nothing to do we're always on our phone so in one sense it's easier for bands to grow um but goals and stuff like man i've always wanted to make my own little coffee company or at least merch of co like you can private label your own shit like i had this website all planned out i bought the page had danny make the artwork for from ashes to brew.com <laughs> nice uh we we just never got the capital to start it unfortunately like i had it all lined up it's still ready to go. I wish we could do it. Just, man, it's a good time to do it now because yeah. bands. You can market it both especially ways since too. the pandemic. But they start doing the coffee and they start doing beer a yeah. lot. So it's like, if you're, yeah. you're into those two things and even well, weed products too, which is yeah. You know, right. I forgot what someone made an entire like joint making kit and i was like the fuck it looked amazing i don't even smoke weed i was like i might buy it, it looks dope like i was just like <laughs> i don't know it's, yeah it's like maybe i'll just get into it i'll spend 150 dollars <laughs> whatever that's that's awesome though that's a good name too yeah it, it, play on the name like no joke this has been probably two and a half years like i already had this idea it all planned out before and then like three months later i see corn release their own coffee thing like man i had this idea first and we didn't get to fucking do it Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you have the name, it's like, dude, literally the whole battle is done on us. Yeah. I just gotta find a good coffee. I like, yeah. Oh man, yeah. That's your favorite coffee right now. It, oh yeah. No, actually, Chris should ask that. Cause Chris should at whatever. No, I was just gonna, I'm, I'm like a, a big Hello. coffee guy. So like, anytime a band puts out a coffee, I buy it. Like, I just got Lamb of Gods. Like, I'm the one I haven't gotten yet is Behemoth. So I was gonna ask you which one. Like, have you tried and which one do you want? I haven't got to try any band stuff, but like if I were to make, if, were, if I were to come out with a single blend to like say, hey, hey, here's what we got, it would probably be in between a medium and a dark French. Like, I don't think you can start out darker than dark. That's just not going to work. But <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> as your black man, I, I like my taste personally is between <laughs> medium and dark. I don't know. That's good I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure what most people love, but. Um, like I'll still drink light coffee too. I'll drink anything, honestly. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how I am with coffee too. I'll drink anything. Um, I don't know if you ever checked out uh, Between the Bear to Me. Paul Wagner has his own 
um, coffee company. I definitely recommend if you're a coffee guy, you're going to love it. It's a yeah, city it. they do some good stuff. I mean, obviously I didn't know that he had his own coffee company. I have the guitar player's guitar right there. Like, oh, nice. He has that his own line nice. of PRS guitars. Yeah. He's doing something right. I love him. Good <laughs> All right, so we have the random silly question segment here on the show. I don't know if you remember this from last time I asked you three random silly questions. We got a new batch for you. So question number one, uh, this is kind of like a two-parter. If you had to make a celebrity zombie apocalypse team, who would you recruit and where would you guys hide? Uh, Probably Liam Neeson would hide nowhere. (laughs) <laughs> we take just go wherever we want that's it <laughs> take the fight to them which yeah. Liam Neeson do you have <laughs> you fly <Swigon> gone taken <laughs> oh man is he, is he not all, all of those things in one yeah right yeah imagine uh, he's just a he's an uno wild card he just comes out just with all this like what the fuck he has a pen he killed a, he has his <laughs> lightsaber I didn't even know those existed what's his name in Batman what? he trained Batman what's his name in that oh, uh, uh, Raz al Ghul yeah that's right yeah, he's, he's badass in that too. I mean, I suppose you could add to the team all all the awesome people like Keanu Reeves and oh, uh, yeah, John Wick. <laughs> I I guess we'll add in Vin Diesel as comedic relief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. just a, and, and to mention every about half an hour that this isn't uh this isn't work. This is family or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say, yo, this is family. Well, <laughs> I feel like oh my um, God. It, the only problem the Raz Al Ghul, though, he's weak against buildings and trains. He did get taken <laughs> out pretty <laughs> embarrassingly by a train. That's when he morphs into Qui Gon. We can't <laughs> have that on the zombie team. <laughs> you never know. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, question number two uh, What would be the best and the worst anime world to live in? Give me examples. So, like, you, the things. universe. Uh, for me, well, it always changes depending if you're a main character or not. Because if you're not a main character, I feel like One Piece would suck. You know, I got the One Piece flag here. Naruto would probably blow a little bit. You know, you're just randomly, like, walking around. And, like, a gigantic summon frog will just crush your house. And you're like, fuck! See, see <laughs> I, now, now, if you can't tell with yeah. all this stuff, that, that's actually kind of where I wouldn't mind being just because, like, I'm that guy that always complains. I'm like, God, I wish the internet didn't even fucking exist. So, if you know you're a main character, I, would you pick Naruto? I probably would. it be would. Uh, Shippuden or just regular? Definitely Shippuden. Oh, man. Most and definitely. what would be the worst? What would be the one without a mm. doubt? You'd be like, hell no. Man. I, I'm trying to like, my brain's going a million miles an hour right now. Trying to think of like, <laughs> not just anime, thinking like movie universes and whatnot. Ah. Oh. Mine's always Attack on Titan, without a doubt. I feel like even if you're a main character, that universe kind of blows to just live in. You know, actually, you are absolutely right. And I'm not sure if you're caught up on that manga, show. Manga and show. I'm up. Oh, okay. I, I haven't read it, but I am caught up on the show. And it's it, it's weird how... It's almost actually similar to The Walking Dead in the way that they try to make the good guys eventually become the bad guys. Even though it's... You know it's not. But like you try to make you try to get sympathy for all sides yeah it uh yeah it gets it's nutty like uh yeah because where they just got to in the show it's like because uh, i'd always just black attack on tying out for a year yeah. i'd like, finish and i just like i'd catch up to the manga i catch up to the show and i was just like what is happening <laughs> but regardless that would be a pretty shit world to live in just walk outside absolutely oh, it's a nice day just get chomped in half <laughs> yeah they just hear the, the the choir hit in and you're like wait a minute oh Oh no! <laughs> like oh, that was a beautiful day. Oh my god! Yeah, no, I agree totally. And that was uh, because I saw you were just super into anime. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, we gotta bring in some anime on this. I was like, <laughs> I mean, I oh, think man. my what are you watching right now? Dragon Ball Z. You guys fan of that? Oh, as a main a classic. character, as a main character, yeah. absolutely. Again, that's a pretty bad world to live in if you're just a dude. <laughs> <laughs> imagine just get yeah. a dude just gets thrown you just got tentacles you're like what the hell is that and oh, they yeah, all said there's a there's a dude in your head through. telling you to give him your injury energy imagine yeah, as head. a main character you got pretty much nothing to worry about you just snap your fingers and <laughs> absolutely kill well, unless, you're krillin. unless you're krillin unless you're krillin dragon ball z well no if you're That's yamcha man. You, you might as well just be a dude on the street because Yamcha gets abused left and right. Yeah, yeah, After yeah. the first arc, he's basically just a guy that likes girls. Like, that's a bad <laughs> <laughs> like, I, Dude, 
Did you, did you, well, actually, did you ever watch Dragon Ball Super? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So did, if you watch the whole show, there is a filler episode where they play baseball. I do vaguely remember that. It's been like a couple years. But... Yeah. There's a scene where they throw back to when he got blown up by the Cybermen. Mm-hmm. You know, when the gods start getting into a fight, he mm-hmm. runs home and they look at the home base and he's just in the same like spot where he got killed by the Cybermen. And they're all like, this looks vaguely familiar. I was like, dude, they just do him dirty every time. <laughs> I was like, just beating his ass up. So, oh my God. Yeah, dude, it's it's brutal. What are you on right now, by any chance? Are you watching any shows right now besides uh, Attack of Titan, I guess? Yeah, we're watching um, Promised Neverland. We're watching one called Rage of Bahamut, which oh, is – I, I didn't know anything about it. I just gave it a try. It's pretty good. I would recommend that one. Oh, man. We're, we're trying to find some that we're just not really familiar with. We've kind of been through most of the classics. I am starting – I didn't watch Bleach, so I'm Me neither. starting that, yeah. like – I haven't watched One Piece. That'll be a long-term commitment, maybe next year, because I'm we're trying to get all these other ones out of the oh, way. Yeah. You know, like let me that. let me tell you, that was the one I attacked during uh, COVID, mm-hmm. and it took a, about. I just started seeing light again. I just came out of it, <laughs> right? Basically. Yeah, no, it's it's great, but uh, there is a trick if you ever when you ever do. Apparently, there's this website One Pace, and they mm-hmm. cut up the episodes to fit just the manga, basically. Oh, okay. So you can do it just through straight through, like I did. But apparently they cut about 300 episodes out where it's like they cut yeah. all the, a lot of the filler and stuff where like the, you're still sitting on months yeah. and months of not leaving. It's brutal. Head. <laughs> it's brutal. But yeah, 300 <laughs> episodes of filler. Well, because they don't have like like Dragon Ball Z has filler. They will actually they do like Dragon Ball Z has filler and they do the same thing One Piece does where they have a lot of crowd reactions and stuff. And they're just like stuff to make the episode last a little longer just because they're they never do seasons. It's just every week. So they have to just like they caught up to the book, you know, or almost they're like like a couple chapters behind, really. Well, now actually, I don't know why they did that. Actually, they're pretty far, but whatever. But yeah, so that's why that shit happens. Where you're like, what the fuck was that? Just a chapter? <laughs> it's just like nothing happened. But it's a great show. I recommend it. Besides that, damn. What about the third question? Oh, all right. Question number three. What's your best appliance in your house? Uh, I've. I get excited about everything that I get, like for a little bit of time and I move on to the next, like I was so excited when I got my Dyson vacuum. I'm like, man, this is the peak of the peak of mid twenties existence. And then, <laughs> then I got older. I'm like, all right, well, I guess it's about time. I need a nice trash can in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, how is a Dyson? I know. Like I never actually met anyone who actually had one. We, uh, we have one of the ones that's like more compact. It's not like a, f- the main big giant floor one but like it's a battery powered one and it's the best thing ever it's like 250 bucks oh, i love so it's it actually I, worth it actually okay. yeah absolutely we have four cats so it it works on all the fur it works on everything it's great yeah jesse can relate to that yeah i have one cat and it's like a fluffy cat and oh my god i feel like i'm constantly just sweeping up and cleaning after that thing like yeah, I, wear, the, I wear black a lot so as soon as i touch it it's like yeah covered. So this this episode of the podcast is now brought to you by Dyson, correct? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. And yes. uh, Friskies and <laughs> fancy feasts. We got a, we got a few of them. Oh no, Chewy.com. Yeah, that's you're stuck inside one. because Every of COVID. Chewy.com. <laughs> oh man. All right. Yeah. So that was the random silly question segment. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> Um, all right. So before we let you go, do you guys have any plans on like a live stream event, maybe like a tour plan in like a couple months or something like that or anything? Um, it, we have been discussing the, the live streaming thing. That's a definite possibility. Like we're at the point where right now we're not that hopeful on live touring. So why the fuck not? Why, why not at least give you something? And it'll, it'll actually give fans in different countries as well a chance to see what a live show could be like, I guess. So to that. Yeah. yeah. That seemed to be the coolest part. I, I remember I think Code Orange was one of the first bands. They actually had a show that weekend and they yeah. just basically it got canceled and they just made it into a live oh, okay. the album release show. So they just had a guy come and they filmed it. Awesome. And and I was thinking about that. Like obviously it sucks compared to going to a live show, especially for a heavier band or like like guys like you who are high energy. It's like, you know, it's not much you can do at your home unless you want to go through the floor or break a table. <laughs> but uh I saw like it was like ten thousand people or nine thousand people. I was like, dude, that show might have had eight hundred people at it. It's like and that just times it by ten. So yeah, a lot of people like that saying, Oh, this is the first time I ever got to see them. So it's like right. 
So that's something that that seemed the only kind of good part, I guess, out of. Yeah, I mean, it's an experience that you can get by outside of just watching a YouTube video of us live or whatever. Like you can actually be in the moment. You know? Yeah. I don't know how it works with some live streaming events. Like if there's like if it's like Twitch, you have like a chat bar or something that fans can talk to each other. So I don't know, but it could be kind of cool to be in the moment with other people. Yeah, it yeah, seems like it seems it. like whatever you want. And some people have their own website. Some people just did through mm-hmm. Twitch. It's it's interesting. Yeah, I was gonna ask which one would you rather if you had to pick? Would you rather Twitch or like one of those like stage it where you pay a ticket price and? Um, um, most likely, probably be doing the tickets. I would think um, Twitch is all right, but like, I th- I think bands are better suited for the ticket thing. I think they stand to make a little bit more money off of that. Yeah, yeah, and it's also guaranteed. It's it, yeah, and also, you don't have to travel anywhere, and it's like tickets so far. I think the most expensive I saw was twenty five bucks, mm-hmm. and it was a pretty big band. So I was kind of like, you know, it's actually not terrible when you think about it. Yeah, like, and well, I, th- I think yeah. it's also cool that those events too. Like, let's say you make them available for the weekend or the three day, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or something like that. Um, I know, like Behemoth, they're remastering and putting out that whole performance like on Blu Ray and stuff like that because they put a lot of money into it, and then you can actually own it. That's kind of dope. Yeah. Do yeah. you think maybe you guys would do that, like remaster and put it out? Um, if we do good enough. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see uh, it first. <laughs> imagine that's the reason. Where is it? It was a good time. We'll do another one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why? <laughs> Just don't ask us, please. <laughs> we don't uh, actually, want to release it. <laughs> there was another question I wanted to ask you, too. You said that, like, you know, sometimes you're the guy bringing uh, some of those weird – you know, uh, riffs or anything like that to the thing. Do you ever have like an ambition to go solo maybe like in between like, you know, albums, maybe just put out a solo project. Um, I, I don't have that ambition while I'm with the band. So maybe at some point the band ends in the next 30 years, then yeah, like I'm sure I'll be sitting on a collective mountain of tracks that I could probably put out. But for right now, like, it's just like, we always just put our effort or like tunnel tunnel vision here. Yeah, so. I, I get it. Yeah, because I, I mean, like, there's some bands that like, you know, like, I love doing this, but there's like, a side of me wants to do something completely different. And then, like, this is where this EP comes out. You mm-hmm. know, like, Devin Townsend has like 50 projects <laughs> he does in all different outlets, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like that. And maybe I'm just not creative enough. I just think it's when I hear bands like, yeah, I got this thing and I know this riff goes to that. I'm like, God bless you, dude. <laughs> so I got it. It's like, it's like, I'm, I'll come up with a riff, maybe. <laughs> it's like right. I have enough for one. Well, man, uh, it was a pleasure doing this with you. I uh, appreciate you taking the time out of your day to, you know, talk with us and shoot the shit. So it's always, yeah, it fun. It's always great, man. Thank you. Oh, dude. And if you guys do another album, come back. You have a live stream. You can come back anytime. And if, uh, you know, your team hears you say what you said about the song, tell them to subscribe and follow and hit the bell. <laughs> All <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, man. Right. Lance, have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you, man. And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. This is your host, Chris. We got my boy, Jesse. What's up, Jesse? My man. How's it going? And we are back. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed everything you heard, everything you missed. You know, we missed you. <laughs> oh, yeah. We didn't do last week. Yeah. 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 No, I gave you guys a nice little um, uh, Chris Holmes interview from Wasp. Well, he's formerly of Wasp. Thought you guys would enjoy that one. That was more on my radio show, but the podcast is back. Brand new episode, and we had Lance from from Ashes to New. Awesome dude, really <laughs> nice. You probably remember him from uh, Rock Allegiance. We did an interview back then. I think that was 2019, 18, right? Yeah, something like that. I don't know why the way you said that. Lance from from Ashes to New. <laughs> well, because <laughs> it was like from from. So I was trying to think of like what of from Ashes to New. But, uh, I mean, either way, it works. Yeah. Right? I fucked that up. Anyway, Panic, they put out a brand new album back in August. Panic. Panic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that song's oh. dope. Yeah, the fucking song, the, uh, the song Panic, uh, the freaking album Panic, it's pretty dope. He was a good guest. It was also interesting, too, man. Again, I kind of tried to keep up. You know, I kind of caught up to maybe your level. I might just be there. I might be a little bit below it. But I'm getting up to your level, and then our guests always fucking eclipse us. Like he had a crazy background with all the figurines. Oh. He had the guitar. He had the 
He had the between the bear and me guitar. Like, what level the, are you talking about? Like the a whole the new background level, level of the Pantera new level <laughs> without the Confederate flags. <laughs> I mean, I'm loving the uh, every time I die flag right there. It's looking pretty good. I was thinking about just doing full every time I die flags because I got the other one. But then I was like, you know what? I, I think it would look better with different, but I want to figure it out. Dude, I'm We're telling you, hit up Jordan and ask him for that. I'll one. just, I'll the, just, I'll just mess with thing. Hey Jordan, hey man, it's your boy Jess. We took a picture on the boat. Uh, twice, <laughs> two times, two, two years in a row. Um, can I get a can I get a wall flag? Remember I asked him during my fantasy hockey league and football. Did you say just invite me? No, he said he wouldn't do it because he would all have to. He would be obligated to draft all Bills players. He can't draft any other player. As yeah. he's a huge Bills fan. Well, that's Buffalo. that's that's a part about being Buffalo. You have to go all Bills. Yeah, he's like I can't, I can't. I would just have to draft the whole Buffalo team. Like it, it wouldn't work. Yeah. He's a funny dude. I hope, uh, you know, because we brought up a uh, live streaming, especially the. I hope everyone releases their live streams. The telethon, you got the Black Dahlia murder, which was amazing. Those two were probably the best streams because it was so creative and fun. I missed the Black Dahlia one. I did not see it. That one is hilarious. Like it's just yeah. pure. Like for to watch every time I die and then the Black Dahlia murder back to back, I was just like what the hell because like you know i watched the dance gavin dance one also that weekend and that one was like just beautiful in the sense of the look the performance was great as just a show it was amazing they sounded great but like every time i die and black dog murder like that's cool we're gonna sound good and black dog murder especially sounded amazing but they're like we're gonna do a bunch of extra shit yeah like they were doing little bits to get them from like all these different the sets bits is what made every time i did every oh. time i die that i mean no offense the performance is great there was, I feel like there was something wrong with the mix or something, or maybe, I don't know, something sounded a little off. So if they do like remaster and put it out, I hope they mess with that a little well, bit. But the, the bits are amazing. And them getting like, um, I don't know, Andrew Dice Clay and other people on it. Well, it yeah, like Andrew so Dice good. Clay crushed me. It was like, well, <laughs> some of us have wives and kids. They knew what they were getting into when you stuck your icky and dropped it on their bag. Goo, 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 a goo, goo, goo. Like, he just like repeated back and forth. I was like, oh my god. And then the Andy uh Andy when he when he just did stand up stand up, he's like, I knew I was gonna be doing this. So I made sure I had a joke in my back pocket. Eh? Eh? He just pulled the banana out. I was just like, oh my god. And he just kept doing it. Eh? Eh? I was just like, dude, this is like the most anti-humor humor I've ever seen in my life. Just non-stop. Just like, holy shit. Yeah, well, every time, I, I mean, uh, did they well, do skits for Black Dahlia Murder, too? Kind of, but they also had things, like, that got them from set to set. They did, like, four sets. They did, like, an attic. They did, like, a barn. They did another place. And then they did, like, a church, which was amazing. Like, it was a church, good. yeah. That was, like, a pol- – it was a – was it Polish? No. Uh, something like that. And then they just – they were just going around. It's and actually they had not a-, a church, though, I heard. Was it? it looked like the people, like who own, the people who own the church. I heard it's like not. Oh well, more of like an entertainment thing. It looked amazing, and uh, yeah. So if I hope they release that, like I was just about to buy the uh, the Lux version of the Lamb of God thing, so I can get the the, the DVD of the uh, the live set. Yeah, but it's only I. You know, they better release the DVD of the Ashes of the Wake. I do like the self titled, but it's like, dude, you better release the DVD of that. Like, you know, it's weird too. They shot it in like basically like you know 4k and they're not putting it on blu-ray it's only on because it costs extra money but it's stupid i don't know even I mean, if you I w- filmed it like that let the well because like usually it's not even how you film it it's like because of how much compression that's why movies film at like 8k and like 16k and they bring it down you know i always wondered that when i heard cameras just like yeah i was like why is it taking so long to go to blu-ray or 4k <laughs> and it's like we film in like 37k it's like the fuck <laughs> and it's like yeah because the compression and where it goes and so i was like the i don't know you and your electronic magic but like you know it's gonna be interesting because that's why i think the code orange not only with being the first to really do it was also the smart one to merchandise everything like the second they finished i think they had the dvd for sale the day after the thing like a week after well, code orange is also one of those people <laughs> They also do everything now. themselves, basically. Yeah, I was going to say, they're really hungry, and they always do everything themselves, you know? Like, they're yeah. just those kind of guys that, like, they have a vision, and they want it done. Yeah. And, and they're happy to get their hands dirty to do it. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I guess that makes sense as an idea guy who literally doesn't do any of his ideas. I'm like, yeah, it's probably really easy to come up with a lot of good ideas and be like, hey, can we do that? It's like, all right, do it. Do it. Look at that new video they did, Code Orange. Where they used it like a, what was it? Xbox, Xbox Connect, too. Yeah, I was like, what? You know, and I didn't even know it was like possible. Playing. I was like, yeah, it's yeah, like, it like super cool. Like those are the bands that are gonna go far, and that's why I understand when people said like, "Hey, Code Orange could be the next Slipknot." I mean, I, I always say when they say that the next Slipknot, the next Maiden, the next Metallica, or something like that. Usually, those kind of bands are gonna be on their own. Like, I still don't believe that uh, Ven Sevenfold is like taking the torch from like Metallica and stuff like that. Yeah, they're a bigger band, but they're a different they're, type. They were close though. They're closer than anyone from Metallica. I feel. They're close, but they're never going to hit that pedigree. Well, you yeah, but that's, that's also be, that's also be because of the world we live in. Yeah, though. because like, it just, but I think closest because like they literally played on the same stage as Metallica on a tour, like in a stadium. They were given it wasn't all them that brought people to the like, disturbed. Ooh, uh, uh, uh. Where where are they? Where are they? They're taking a hiatus. I know they, they, like they keep do. doing that. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you can't saying, do that. Like, you I mean, can't event do that. has been out of the loop for a little bit. I, I know. Well, not really. That. Well, because of COVID, but literally, like, to, to I mean, it's been the a... anniversary of the drummer's death, Rev. Yeah, pizza. Unfortunately, rest in peace. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like Dan uh, disturbs a little bit different. I think they peaked, especially because they became kind of a meme, which is stupid because they're really good. Like that ooh ah ah, ah thing was like the best and worst thing for their career because it's yeah. either that was awesome i love them or this is the dumbest shit ever and i'm gonna make fun of that ooh, for the rest of my life how many people do you meet that like don't like disturbance like all oh, that ooh, uh, <laughs> yeah right that band it's like did you listen to the album it's pretty good like <laughs> like it's not my favorite music but like to say disturb sucks it's like uh dude even the freaking uh i mean stri- whenever they put it out- <laughs> did you listen to the riff and stricken oh everyone right? doing rock band and guitar here was dropping out. plates Disturbed in the house, dropping plates. Well, I mean, like their oh. album, <laughs> killing good. record. Like, I mean, the killing records. I of know course. it's a pun on words. When they put their last record, I know beat their previous record. <laughs> yeah, and they're gonna be a mainstream band, but I think they. I guess it's not fair. I think they would be a different band. I feel like they would be. They actually might be bigger than French. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking on my ass, but I like disturbed. I like them both. Well, but- I had a, a nice little. Uh, discussion with pete about this pete from hath shout out to my boy pete but uh we were talking about how like i still find it crazy how metallica has never played the super bowl and i know i know there's pop artists are way bigger but metallica is still like arguably the biggest band out there they're they they literally got the uh i don't know if you want to call it award or something but they got recognized as like the biggest touring band of all time like they they had some numbers and stats over there and I don't know. I feel like they can literally for like, what was it 20 minutes or something of like that? They can like do enter Sam and their big hits. Like, I feel like they yeah. could definitely rock the world. But Pete, what I was getting to is that Pete showed me their Spotify analytics and streaming analytics and they get crushed. Anything rock related, you know, band like music like that gets crushed by in like pop bands. So like the weekend, yeah. I forgot the exact number, but it was like 70 million or something like that streams, you know? Whereas Metallica was getting 19 million. Yeah, it's also just too dirty. Like there is an audience. Even the Who didn't fit that, and they're legends. Like they're way. Well, my bigger argument than too is like the Rolling Stones did it. Yeah, you and they're know, bigger. They're a rock band, but they're leg- at- their legacy though. Like Metallica and they still don't not belong legacy. There. No. Come on, I think they are right now. No, I feel like I and I feel like also even those bands don't fit. I feel right, like I feel one like too is Red Hot Chili Peppers. That's my biggest thing. They played. I know, but they weren't doing it by themselves, though. They had Beyonce and Bruno Mars come up. I think. You don't think Metallica could do that? They already did that with um, uh, Lady Gaga. Yeah, and that was like the worst performance of their life. Well, that was because it was. I know. They had the mic didn't work and all that. Yeah, James. I'm got just saying, bad. like they could. No, it's cool. Happen. I agree with you. They could. I just feel like that stage is not meant for them. Because technically anybody would look good up there because of the production. Like someone may put this out there, this argument. And they said, literally, if you're a show producer, that is the biggest stage on earth is this halftime show. If you're doing producing that show, you're the best of the best. And even a kid dancing around a broom will look fantastic. (laughs) Any band, a high school band will crush the Super Bowl show. It's not even about who you put in. It's just about putting a face that everyone knows. 
Yeah, that's and, what and just that's why pop. And also, yeah, that and then also most of the time they don't let people play their instruments. Like the Red Hot Chili Peppers. No, they definitely sure. don't. They yeah, so like that. those bands don't like. I would love it. You think it would be amazing? A big four. They just do a turning stage. You just go to Slayer, some shit. Like everyone knows, Raining Blood. They played Guitar Hero three, yeah. but like you know, I know that doesn't fit at all. It's going against what I said. But it's just like as a as a person, yeah, it would be amazing. Like Metallica, Disturbed even would fit because they even they're more you know. See, to me, Disturbed is a little uh, not heavier. You know what I mean? They're not a little. Well, no, they have. I feel like they have actually more softer songs. Sound of Silence. Yeah, like they could even do that thing, and that was a huge the year it came out. Yeah, like, I'm just saying, know, I think Metallica could definitely draw. And if you really need to add someone like Red Hot Chip Peppers did, they can add that pop star and make it work. Metallica is a band that would make it work. No, yeah, but that's what I mean because of the production. Any band would work. And so as a, as a person, yeah, I would, you're, dude, I'm with you. I want Metallica. <laughs> That'd be cool. Because personally, it would be great. Yeah. I like The Weeknd. I didn't give a shit about any of his songs. I was like, this is looks good. I just that's like it. the meme opportunities from it. Well, oh yeah, it, I mean, dude, like literally, like not even like a minute. I looked at my feed already, and there was all the memes about him oh, being yeah. lost in that tunnel or the Slipknot meme. Yeah, that one's pretty. I was too. like, "Yo, when did Corey Taylor do the Super Bowl?" And then I saw that meme on my phone. I'm like, "I said it first. <laughs> I'm like, I said it first. And then Corey Taylor's actually posting about it. You got, you got to post it quick. Yeah, that's it's just this thing. It's not the stage because, in essence, not to be the hippy dippy about it. No matter what anyone says music is all subjective there is obviously there's times when the science of music is really beautiful all oh, this chord change into this lydian scale and whatever like you get crazy with it yeah that's cool but like it's just it it, it depends on the stage like you could see the best band on the worst stage and it would be the worst fucking show send metallica to a fucking uh was a dubstep concert it's gonna look really dumb everyone's like i know i understand man but when yeah. it's just not the same thing, it's going to look stupid after two songs. Yeah. And it's probably, and there's still going to do, there's going to be a lot of people because they know, but it's going to be the worst concert of Metallica's life. <laughs> and they don't do that anymore because they literally played to only fans, basically. Well, instead of playing the Super Bowl this year, they played like Steve. Yeah, Colbert, which is right? funny. Jor- Jordan, uh, you know, Jordan, he's like, dude, Metallica's playing the Super Bowl. They were like, he's like, he's playing Colbert's show after the super bowl like, that doesn't count yeah <laughs> although like, the one year they actually played in san francisco the super bowl was in san francisco and they yeah. didn't get it and so instead they just played a vet uh like a stadium or a venue nearby or something they played the stadium the day before it's like how's that even possible yeah, <laughs> yeah you know it, it's it's i'm with you i just think to close out the, the 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 discussion i just think that depends on the stage like it just fits the weekend even though he it needs a bigger artist like the weekend's good Someone mentioned it. I didn't feel anything after, like even the the J Lo and the fucking the Sh- Shakira? Shakira. That was way better. Well, of course, like, because there was also well, not even that. Like the dude, that's know. what everyone, all the memes are saying. Well, even the same people like dude, they're so old, they shouldn't shake their bite. Screw you, they're crazy in shape and they look amazing. But it's more, it's just the high energy. They're like in your face. Like the weekend wasn't that high energy. Like the cool thing. Like his songs are really kind of. I like, got to say, I didn't know he had all those songs. I heard, I knew all those songs and I didn't know that was him. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is the week. He's an amazing about. singer. I don't think his style fits the show and he looked great doing it. But like when you really listen to music, say, is it going to be different if it wasn't like COVID situation? No. Well, what do you mean? Like people online were like, oh, I wonder how the halftime would have showed up. Like, like the halftime show, how would it turned out if it wasn't the pandemic right now? Where they had added uh, more people on stage, where they had added more stuff you, going could on. Could you add more people? There was like 200 people like next to them. But yeah, I, I, I thought that too. I was like, dude, you saw, you saw that album cover. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, it doesn't make sense because of the, like, unless like the crowd response would be different, like it would be louder cheering. Or they said that maybe there would be more people working on it and something. Like, I, I don't think so. I think that's not the enough. problem. I think it's, it's yeah. literally, it looked as good as it's going to be, and they have the best people in the world working on it. I just think it depends on the artist. Like, but there's not that many artists that can hold that spot and actually make it special. Like the producers will always make you look amazing. There is no Super Bowl that's gonna look stupid in the sense that it's gonna look bad. Except the sharks. Remember the, the shark, the dancing shark? One of the Super Bowls. Someone was just dressed up as a shark on stage. No, I, I, I don't think remember it's Katy that. Perry. Oh, but but it's just like it's still gonna look good and sound good. It's just 
do you like the artist is the but no artist is really big enough not many artists are around to make it like a memory like there's no michael jackson to just fucking disappear from the stage to the top of the, the arena and back somehow and then just like dance and like all of his music is really upbeat you pick the right michael jackson song said that i thought of creed doing the super bowl remember <laughs> but that? even that like he flew across yeah it's like these big <laughs> things like but even their music is sometimes not like but yeah there's moments you got to create and yeah Oh no, it's not all the time. Most bands are gonna fail. Like I even thought the Red Hot Chip Peppers, Beyonce. I thought Bruno Mars was a guest, and both years Bruno Mars was he was he was the main guy, and then he was a guest. I think Bruno Mars should just do it every year. <laughs> like that guy is Bruno just a Mars showman fan here. You heard it first, dude. I don't even listen to his music. Every time I see that dude, I'm like, I want to go see this dude live because he's just so talented. He dances, he sings, he plays instruments. And he's just like, and he's got like that old school suit band thing where they're all like dancing together in the suits. And he's just big he's ass classy. white, big ass white smile. Hey, how's it go? Hey, he's just dancing his ass off, singing his ass Curly off. Curly whites, dude. It's amazing every time. Like, dude, like yeah, Bruno Mars is like, and all of his music's upbeat as shit. And he just got his whole entourage. They all look fucking good as shit, just dancing. No, no one looks bad. Like yeah. you bring that guy. I'm like, I know you can't do it. Everyone would be like, at one point, be like, who the hell? I don't give a shit. For me personally, put Bruno Mars up there every time. If you're well, gonna have I to think do a uh, Bruno Mars and Metallica collaboration for the next Super Bowl, but we'll stop I'll take here. It. Absolutely. We'll keep going, guys. To bore you. You're like, this, what is this? I don't want to talk about Bruno Mars, but remember, yeah. like, subscribe, do all that stuff, <laughs> follow, smash the like buttons, subscribe. I can't think of any other words I'm supposed subscribe. to Subscribe. Oh, uh, Chris, you're absolutely right. We should stop talking about Super Bowl. Let's talk about real serious things. COVID. Let's talk more about stuff. No, <laughs> yeah, no, like, subscribe, hit the bell. Like Chris said, put your stuff. You got a radio show. You got a YouTube channel that you're watching this on. Also, mm-hmm. all major platforms for, for the podcast. All major platforms. Stitcher. Even the small platforms. Yeah. Stitcher, Radio. Google Podcast. You know, Castbox. All that stuff. <laughs> Rock the Castbox. Rock the cast. Yeah, my radio show is Tuesday nights, 7 to 10 p.m. Features me and Aram. We talk about TV shows. We talk about, like, Ozark. We talked about WandaVision this time, Mandalorian, all that good stuff. We even talked about little things with Denzel Washington and Jaron Leto. So uh, tune in. Radio show, 7 to 10, Tuesday nights, WMSC, iHeartRadio, or the website. Check it out. Soon to be Cobra Kai. Uh, uh. Did you guys actually talk about it after we watched the whole first season? That's what I was asking you. Oh, no, no, not on the show. No. Unbelievable. Yeah. So I'll make them. We're making them. I'm making them watch. All We're right, all on the Cobra Kai. Oh, what about me? Instant.com. Oh, YouTube.com slash CC. You do reactions? No. Tell me but more about that. I been, <laughs> to, no, I, I finally, I think I'm going to finally, I had this drum cover in the bag. It's not look, it doesn't look great, but I'm going to use it and just put it out there because it sounds good. And I'm thinking about just starting to knock out some covers that, uh, you know, I just know a bunch of songs I learned over the course of years of playing drums. I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll just like record those and just pump them out every like week or something yeah also i broke the drum head on my bass drum thing so i gotta buy a new mesh head really i was wondering why it wasn't working there's just a hole i'm like see you always you always hitting too hard man this is bullshit it's kind of what you're known for it's a 500 (laughs) dollar drum set all right take the hit all right jesse's channel smash like do all that stuff until next time keep it real